Okay, we're going to look at um, mostly sets in this video with unions and intersections. Um, however, before we do, let's talk briefly about the uh, real numbers and how they are organized or how they are categorized. They're, they can be uh, broken up into sets themselves. So we have the natural numbers, which we use N to represent the whole numbers, which we use W. Integer, we use Z. Um, the rational numbers, we use Q. And then all of these are real, including the irrational numbers, which we use I. Um, the natural numbers, those are the ones you could like see naturally. Um, and they so they start at one, if you think about it that way. So one, two, three, only positive numbers uh, with no decimals. Um, whole numbers uh, include zero. So now we include zero and then all of the natural numbers. So we can say natural numbers are a subset of the whole numbers. If a number is whole, it is also natural. It's, it's kind of work your way down into the circles or ovals there. Um, integers, uh, they include the whole numbers, the natural numbers, but also negative numbers. So we'll put just negative two, uh, negative one, and also zero, one, two, three, still no decimals. And the rational numbers Q, uh, they contain everything that can be written as a fraction. Um, this includes decimals um, that are repeating. Um, this includes uh, decimals that stop. So like three halves, um, 1.7, uh, 1.333 repeating. Um, all of these are rational numbers. Uh, the irrational numbers are are their own set. So they do not include the rational numbers, the integer, the whole, or the natural. Uh, the irrational numbers kind of are by themselves. Um, these are numbers that their decimals go on forever, but they do not repeat. So something like uh, the square root of two, if you put that in your calculator, you'll get a decimal that just goes on forever. So that, or some a very popular one is pi, as that 3.14 just keeps going and going and going. Um, e is another irrational number. Uh, so these are irrational numbers that can, cannot be written as a fraction. Okay, so uh, this question here says, to which subsets of the real numbers does each number belong? Uh, so pause this, pause this video, try to answer this on your own, um, and then see how you did. And there are going to be um, more than one answer on some of these. Uh, so zero belongs to the whole number, and then also everything if inside of the whole numbers, which is the natural numbers. Um, and then notice these are all real. I think I forgot to mention this, or we use this R. Uh, so you don't have to say real uh, when it comes to the subsets because every single one of them is a, a real number. Um, 5.67, uh, that would be a rational number. It's a terminating decimal. Um, and then it would also be everything that's inside of the rational number. So it's also an integer. It's also a whole number. And it's also a natural number. Um, this negative uh, 5.67 repeating, um, that falls in the same category as above because it can be written as a fraction. So it's Q, Z, W, N. And then square root of seven is irrational. So that is just I. It's not rational. It's got to be either rational or irrational. You got to pick one or the other. Um, and then it, since it's rational, it can't be an integer whole or a natural number. Okay, so let's continue um, this discussion on sets and subsets. So with subsets versus elements, uh, so how do you know which one to use? Um, so when comparing two sets, uh, you're going to use a oh, and this so this is for sorry, this is for notation. It's a little unclear. Uh, so when comparing two sets, the notation you'll use are like an equal sign or not equal to. Um, and when comparing a member or an element and a set, um, you'll use the element of or 
not an element of. Um, and so this is just to kind of clear up notation. So we could say like set A is equal to set B, um, but we wouldn't say like, you know, um, we wouldn't say A is equal to two or two is equal to A. If it belongs to set A, we would say A is an element of, whoops, that's not right. Um, we would say uh, three is an element of A for some of that notation stuff. Okay, so here, um, these are true or false questions. Um, so there's some examples. We just want to know if these are true or false. And so here you're given A, the set is an odd counting number smaller than 10. Um, if you're given these in words, especially if there's not that many um, values, probably a good idea to write them out. So an odd counting number smaller than 10 um, would be 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So counting number also is another way to say it, like the natural numbers. So it doesn't include negative. Um, and then, okay, so now we're ready. So A is A one three seven or one three five seven nine. I should use my brackets there. Um, and then going this three dots mean they go on forever. Does it continue on? And this is false because it's got to be smaller than ten, so it will not continue on. This says is this says four is not an element of B. So find B, and sure enough, there's four. Uh, so four is an element of B. Uh, this is also false. This one says B is not equal to C, and that's true because they're not the exact same set. C has one, B does not, and that's enough to say they're not equal. Uh, so this is true. And this says C is a subset of A. And so is are all of these numbers in A? And that's false. 2 is not in A. So this is false. And this symbol, I'll write this a little bigger. This symbol means subset. Um so let's see, it looks like a sideways U with a line underneath it. It's a subset of A. So um, let's look at another set, a definition. Um, a and B are sets. Um, it's A and B are sets, and A and B is U A union B. Um, what this means is the set of elements of A or B, or it means all the elements in both A or B. The notation is this big it's a union symbol um, or a cup. It looks like a big U for union, which is nice to think about as you memorize. But that means to join them together. So it means one or the other or both. If this were A and this were B, the union would be in this Venn diagram. It would mean all of this. So it's what they, um, it's just putting them together, taking A, taking B putting them together in one set. Uh, the intersection. So an intersection, A intersect B, we write as A with that upside down union, it's the cap B, and it's the set of elements of A and B. So it's what they have in common. We'll say what they share. Uh, we have this word and that we use, or it's in both. And if this were the diagram, then it would be in, shaded in the middle. Uh, 
an empty set, we use this notation, the circle with a line through it. You probably have seen it before uh, or might have seen it before with using no solution. It means there's no solutions in the set. That's why we use that. Um, and it's a set with no elements. Uh, so it's not zero. Um, it's nothing, which is confusing, but it's just the empty set. There's nothing in there. So kind of this last note here on this page, just to clarify, if A and B or A intersect B is empty, meaning there's nothing in common. Then we write A intersect B is equal to the empty set. Okay, so, and then, as I mentioned, the empty set does not mean that, um, does not mean zero. So zero is not equal to the empty set because zero is a number or zero is an element. So if zero is in the set, then the set is no longer empty. It has something in there. It just happens to be zero, which we often equate with nothing. And so that's pretty confusing, uh, but just keep that in mind. The empty set and zero are not the same thing. Okay, so there's uh, a handful of examples, and I'm, I'm gonna run through these kind of quickly. So make sure you pause the video and um, try these on your own as you get to the question the other way. Um, and sometimes it's very helpful to draw pictures uh, as you work through these uh, and list out the sets. Use different colors to kind of keep track of what is it, what is what. Um, it helps quite a bit too. Okay, so on A, this is D intersect F. So this is what they share or have in common. And so D and F they both have a three because this is one two and so this dot dot means the pattern continues so this f is one two three five let's write that out actually so d is three five seven and then f is one two three four five so their intersection would be three and five they both have three they both have five so D intersect F is three and five. And that's what we're looking for. Uh, that's the answer. Uh, sometimes when you're seeing the set stuff for the first time, it's a little confusing to think, okay, well, what's the answer? What are they asking for? And that's it. Um, so there's not a lot of steps, which sometimes gets confused with it being like, oh, there's not a lot of steps. It must be an easy question. That's not true. These questions are actually very difficult. And one of the reasons they're difficult is because there's not a lot of steps. If, you, if you're not really sure... Um, how to do it. You can't like look and see like step one, step two. Oh, I got confused on step three. This is where I'm, I'm messed up. It's like you, you got to go back to the definitions, uh, work through your thinking and figure out where you're confused. But um, these are pretty tough questions. Okay. So if you have like parentheses like this, it's like order of operations. Find what's in the parentheses first. So um, let's find F intersect E. So F and E, what do they have in common? Well, they both have a two and they both have a four. So this is going to be the set two, four. And now we're going to union that with D. And so we have D union F intersect E. This is just everything that they have. Um, we'll put that on the next line here. So D is three, five, seven. So three and then i'm going to combine that with two whoops let's change the order there uh two three four five and seven would be the union of those two sets and then c we're going to find these two unions and then see what they have in common and so 
uh, D union F. would be all of these things and we won't write well, I guess we'll write that so one three it'd be one two three four five and then seven and then D union E would be two four six eight and then three five seven so two three four five six, seven, and eight, and then we'll put them together all over here, or not put them together, but what do they have in common? So they both have a, they have this two, three, four, and five, two, three, four, and five, and then they both have a seven. So this would be two, three, four, five, and seven. Okay, now you want to fill in the blank, and there could be more than um, one answer. Uh, so this is kind of just a note over here. Remember, element and not an element of is for um, when you compare an element. Uh, since they're all numbers, we'll say this, a number and set, or number to set. And this is a set two sets. So subset, not subset, you have to be talking about two sets. Okay, so five, what about five and E union F? Well, E union F would be putting these together. And so five would be included if you combine those. So five is an element of E union F. Three is not in E something F. So I want to get three out of there. So three is not an E Three is an F. So if I intersect those, if I see what's in common, they would not have a three in it. So three is not in the intersection. G, I want to know if G, since this is a set and then another set, I'm looking at subset or not a subset. So D intersect F. Let's figure out what that is. That's what they have in common and three five seven and then two four six eight that is just empty oh i was looking at the wrong one sorry one two three four five um so they have a three and a five and g the set is three five so they are equal to each other you could also say they're a subset technically that's true um but a better answer would be equal and then D intersect G, um, what they have in common, how's that compared to D? Uh, so that's just three and five again. And then this is a subset of D. And you could know that if because D is the intersection then it's going to be a subset of D here. Okay, and then uh, last couple examples here just about the empty set. So take a minute, pause the video, try these. Um, so A union the empty set, this is false. It's not equal to the empty set because it will include all of A. A with nothing gives you A. Is D a subset of the empty set? This is also false. Because D has an element in it, um, it can't be, if you will, like smaller or fit inside of the empty set. However, the empty set is always, and that's that note, a subset of another set. So um, note about empty set and subsets, the empty set is always a subset because a set can always can always contains um nothing if you will 
Okay, uh, this is a lot to process. So I would rewatch this if you need to um, ask questions, find some more information on this and make sure you get some practice.